Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And Four of Swords, I feel like right now we're giving pause, right? I feel like we're trying to come back to a center. We're trying to just step away from all of the turmoil of life, all of the trouble, all of the, the chaos, the hectic energy, the responsibilities, the daily stuff, you know and uh, all the activity, and just trying to take a breath, you know, just trying to say, okay, I just, I need a moment, or a day, or a week, or whatever, at least a moment, to center myself, take a breath, and figure out what's coming next, right? So I feel like this is really, this is a, almost a disengagement from things. This is, uh, we're not wanting to fight, we're taking, we're, we're kind of giving ourselves a timeout, right? I think sometimes we need that, Leo. We're trying to listen to the voice within. We're trying to get an assessment from the divine. We're trying to get, uh, we're trying to get a sign. We're trying to get a message, right? Three of Cups, Princess of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, very very nice. Five of Swords, but it is inverted. See, the heart is upside down. What I like to think it's right side up here, with a point facing upwards, right? Which means that spirit is ruling over matter, which means that we've given spirit back the wheel. Yeah. We got a Two of Swords, a Ten of Wands. We have one of your power cards here in the form of the Prince of Wands. That is the fixed fire energy. That is, that is one of your superpowers. And we've got a nine of swords. Now, I feel like I feel like we are pausing to take this breath with the four of swords, right? And what we're trying to do is is open ourselves up to that divine energy to get that to get that revelation, right, about our future, about ourselves, about what we're doing, where we're going, and why. Um, so I feel like this is really, you know, we've got we've got a ten and a ten here, ten of fire and a ten of earth, right? Fire to earth. That's the plan. Fire to earth. To take our will, to take our intention, and to create it, to manifest our very best life. All right. So um, if we're trying to assess where we are and where we will be, I feel like the high priestess is revealing a lot of things to you. And maybe the high priestess is asking with that ten of pentacles up at the top, where do you want to be? Right? This is usually that ideal, that picture of the future, that best life, let's say a year from now. Look out a year from now with your spiritual vision. Where do you want to be? Right? Where will you be a year from now? Well, I think High Priestess is saying that you will, you will be a lot, uh, a lot better off a year from now than you are now. I think there's a financial component here. I think that you're learning to utilize all of the resources that are available to you in the form of the Princess of Pentacles. And you're learning how to turn that, to cultivate that into success, into best life, into your ideals, into real uh, fortune. Okay, real wealth. So I think financially, especially, you're going to be much better off a year from now. What you are, what you're working on now is going to reach a level of success maybe 10 months, right? We've got a 10, we've got a 10, maybe even just 10 months from now. Because the princess of pentacles is like the uncarved block. It is all the potential of the situation, all the materials available to you, and you've got to carve your work of art, 
right? You've got to turn it, you've got to sculpt it, you've got to mold it into something. And that's what you're doing, fire to earth, fire to earth, this manifestation, right? So the result of all of this raw material, this uncarved block, this is a big block of clay, right? This is your final masterpiece. I think you're in 10, 12 months from now, you're going to reach a level of success like you never dreamed of. It's going to have that financial component, but more than that, it's going to have um, a creative satisfaction, okay? A creative satisfaction. Part of that is this Three of Cups that's underneath everything. This is your, this is your understanding of what kind of feeling you want your life to have. We always think what, what objects I want, like what kind of success I want, what are the details, what does it look like, what am I trying to achieve? Yes, that's fine. We need that. As long as this, the earth, is the vessel for the water energy. Now, this water energy down here is crucial because it's the only water energy we have. Let's quickly select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. It's a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot that we're just going to set aside. We're going to put Tiny Bob Ross right on top. Happy little Bob. And uh, we're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together and give us our confirmation. Uh, if at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is, I want you to put your prediction down in the comments. We can do it together. Make it a group exercise. All right. Now let's look around the room. The only major arcana card we have is the High Priestess. So I feel like we're really looking for a sign. We're looking for some sort of revelation or some sort of confirmation about our future. We're taking a rest. We've tried to figure it out mentally, like trying to see the future, just kind of intellectually reasoning it out. Well, if I do these things, maybe in a few months, I'll reach a certain milestone and et cetera, et cetera. And that's good. We have to be involved that way. You know, the high priestess is looking for that little extra. This is us wanting, almost wanting spirit to val validate the plans that we've already made. Okay, looking for a sign, looking for that confirmation. So I think that you're getting that. Okay, I think spirit is confirming to you. Spirit is communicating to you, and it might be through subtle ways. It might be through signs, symbols, omens, synchronicities, dreams, visions, revelations, right? You're not just going to get a phone call that says, okay, you're good to go. Maybe that's what you're waiting for. Um, but I feel like right now you're getting a lot of a lot of information from spirit, from the divine, right? From your subtle spiritual energies, from your soul, from your unconscious, whatever you want to say. But I feel like it is revealing some of this future energy to you. And um, the 10 especially, I think, is very important because this is, this is really your highest ideal. I think that there's a lot going on in your life. You're very much hoping, praying, working hard toward... Um, some financial abundance in the future, and I think that's coming. I think this year is going to see a, an increase of your financial abundance to where 10 months or a year from now, it's going to be, there's, there's going to be a culmination, a crescendo of all of this abundance coming in, okay? We have to make sure that we are still feeling it, though. And if you stop feeling it, then you know you've got to shift something somewhere. Because this is that feeling of joy, of love, of celebration, the feeling of like of optimism, of, of hopefulness, the feeling of gratitude for what we are what we are doing with our lives, you know? This is us working hard and being thankful that we have the opportunity to work hard to reach that level of success. This is also feeling as if your creative potential is being put to good use, that your spirit is activated in the work that you're doing in this project, in this life, in this, let's say, 12-month plan, all right? So where will you be a year from now? Well, you will have succeeded in this project, whatever the carving of this uncarved block or this, this block of clay, uh, you will have succeeded in, in finishing this. Now, with, this is a certain, um, a certain goal, a major goal. This is a, a big one. This isn't just kind of the the incremental goals. This is the big kind of leap that we talk about. We have a really, really huge goal set up in life. To get there, we've got to go step by step. This is not that. This is that big goal, right? 
And I feel like in 10 or 12 months from now, this is where you will be. You will have completed this. Okay. And I feel that it will give you a lot of reason to celebrate. I feel like we are, we are celebrating every day. Every day we get a little bit better. Every day we get a little bit further. Every day we make a little bit of progress chiseling out our wealth from this, re this resource. And as long as you still feel that joy, feel that you're making progress, you feel the satisfaction, not the satisfaction that comes from attaining that big goal, but the satisfaction that comes from knowing that every day you're doing your very best and you're getting closer and closer and closer. Okay. Now, the five of wands, or swords, excuse me, that usually comes out this way, five of swords, point downward. Um, this card is usually a lot of worry and a lot of stress, okay? A lot of confusion, a lot of conflict, a lot of doubts, a lot of self-criticism, yeah? But this card is right side up. See, to me, it's right side up, but really it's, it's inverted because this card usually is like this. It's usually not a very good card, right? Uh, it's usually in indicating that um, something is going on with us that really needs to change. Mentally, we're doing something that we is not really that helpful to ourselves. All right. So the idea is, yes, we turn this card around. We put our trust in spirit. We, we worry, we think, we plan, but we don't obsess. We don't stress. We don't... We don't um, get so worried that we are just kind of powerless, that we're not doing anything, right? We're putting a little bit of trust. We're letting spirit take the wheel. And this is in your future position. So I feel like, I feel like a lot of your doubts will be resolved. Um, I think that as this year progresses, you will get more and more confident about your path. You will get more and more confirmation from spirit, right? You will get more and more uh, certainty about what you're doing, and you'll see more and more progress, right? So a year from now, you're going to, um, I think it's, it's a, a complete shift in your thought process, you know? Rather than us trying to always be overcoming the doubts and the self-criticism, now, those doubts and that criticism is, it's kind of a distant memory. It's like we're getting out of that habit, right? It's a habit that we're breaking. And it's, and it's by trusting in spirit, by tapping into that divine energy and receiving the signs. And really, the method is four to five, right? Four to five, five of uh, swords, four of swords, going back to this restful state, getting centered again. When we see our minds start to kind of go in this kind of circle, we stop it. We come back to center. We, we acknowledge this. We observe this. But then we come back to really this and this with this. We come back to, it's like a, a mantra. It's like, um, it's like a meditation when you're, you're focusing on your breath during a meditation. Your mind starts to wander we bring it back. We don't judge. We don't stress. We don't criticize. We just bring it back. Bring it back to center. So when we find ourselves worrying about all these millions of things that we, we can worry about in life, bring it back to center. Whatever center is for you, if it's God, goddess, deity, if it's, if it's love, if it's your heart chakra, uh, if it's your third eye, if it's the breath, right? If it's the stillness, um, whatever it might be, we bring it back. And I feel like this is a habit that really is going to be greatly established in the next year, you know, to the point where it's going to be automatic, where you start to worry and just before you know it, you're right back, you're right back at center. Yeah. Moving over to the path of the serpent, we start with the two of swords. I think that um, the two of swords kind of looks like two diverging pathways, right? It looks like there's a fork in the road. It looks like indecision. It looks like we're standing there thinking, oh, shoot, which way am I supposed to go again? You know, um, we'd like we don't remember which way we were supposed to go or both paths. It looks really similar. I don't remember which way. 
So there's a hesitation, there's a doubt, there is a, a bit of confusion, there's a pause, there's an indecision here, right? But the two of swords shows us the solution. And the solution is that crescent moon at the very top. Because that is the psychic, lunar, divine connection, spiritual energy, communication, that download. It is the high priestess. The high priestess is the full moon. So this card is saying, rather than be, um, be indecisive and be worried, and then that starts the whole process of getting into the five of swords and all the stress again, we come back to center and we realize that it's through the center, right? Right in between the two cards is that lunar energy. The, the center here is our connection with the spiritual light, with the divine energy, with consciousness, with our psychic energy, whatever you want to call it. And that gives us the path, that gives us the certainty about where we're going. So I feel as if your intuition in the next year, where will you be a year from now? Your intuition will be extremely on point, fine-tuned. That any time that there is an issue, we're, we, we're not going to get all worked up and stressed out and all this stuff. We'll think it through and you know, we'll be reasonable, rational creatures, of course. But your intuition is going to be so heightened that it's going to be almost instantaneous what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And I think that's a big change from where you are right now. I honestly do. We've got that four. We've got that five of swords. Right? So I feel like that is kind of your struggle right now is to get out of that worry mode and just get back to center and figure out what to do. Look for the signs, use your intuition, and make a, make a move. That's how we're carving this block and getting this wealth, you know, uh, in our future. Well, in that future, there's going to be no, there's going to be no, um, th there's going to be no focus on this energy. This is going to be more automatic, right? Trusting this intuition. So this is something that you're practicing now. And in the future, it's going to be so well established in your consciousness that it will be almost effortless. And in other words, things are going to be going so much more smooth. Uh, everything is going to have a flow to it. And I feel like there's not going to be this abrupt stop, like this work stoppage, you know, where we're not making progress because we just can't figure something out. We don't know what to do. We get confused. We get turned around. We start doubting. We have these self-criticisms. Um, it's confidence, it's certainty, it's clarity, it's intuitive, it's instinctual, right? That's two of swords. Ten of wands next in the environment. Uh, a year from now, you're going to have secured this partnership that you've been trying to, to secure. I don't know if it's a creative kind of partnership, if it's a business thing. Um, in this card, we see that two are coming together, right? And it's creating this unbelievable, unstoppable force. So maybe a power couple, maybe it's a creative collaboration or a business thing, right? Um, it could be you really with your higher self, you with your God, goddess, deity, ancestors, guardian angels, higher mind, whatever you want to call it. That could be the power couple we're talking about. But I feel like you're going to be, um, you're going to have such a, well, such a leadership position for one thing, that you're going to be really um, at the cutting edge, at the forefront, at the frontier of something. Okay. I also feel like um, you are absolutely committed that you have found your place in the world and you're giving it all of your energy that it is some it's like we wake up and we're, we just can't wait to get out of bed and and get back to work get back to our life you know and when i say work i don't necessarily mean what you do for money i don't necessarily mean your job or your career i mean whatever you're doing whatever your purpose is right that's our work what we what we focus on and this wealth doesn't have to be financial wealth can mean all sorts of things all right um, I feel like this is definitely indicating some financial wealth, stability, security, abundance in the future, but there's a lot of other things too. Okay. So it's up to you again, to figure out 
Where will you be a year from now? Not where do you want to be, not where could you be, but where will you be one year from now? And that's what we're going to put all of our effort into. Now we see you really expending that energy in the environment. Now you're out here doing the work. There's no wasted efforts here. Uh, sometimes this mental energy can be a wasted effort. You know how many, you know how many mental calories we burn by uh, overthinking and overanalyzing and worrying and stressing and, and criticizing and doubting ourselves? It burns up a lot of our spiritual energy. But now, all of that spiritual energy is being channeled and focused into carving this future out for yourself and for your loved ones and whoever else is, you know, um, whoever else is around your loved ones, you know. The activation of your superpower. That's the difficult thing here that we've got to, that we've got to talk about. We've got the Prince of Wands, which is your power card, but it's in the position of the obstacle, the difficulty. And this is really, I can hear it now. I heard it from the very beginning of this reading. You're saying, a year from now? I gotta wait a year? Um, that's not what, that's not what I'm saying exactly. Um, I'm using it as an example, first of all, to see where, where do you, where will you be? Not where do you want to be? Where will you be a year from now? So that we can put in those efforts now and start creating that wealth now so that we will get to that place one year from now. Okay. It doesn't mean that what you're doing is going to take another year to finish. Um, but it's, the idea that we have to have that kind of semi-long-term goal. We have to have a little bit of an ideal set up in the distance of what we want. Who we want to be, where we want to be, what we want to be doing. We have to have this ideal of wealth and abundance set up in the future. So that we know what we're working toward. And then we reverse engineer it. And we know what we got to do today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day to get that. Okay, And it's really a, kind of an intuitive feeling when you know when you're doing the right thing every day, you know. And uh, I think this card is that impatience. We're like, I got to wait a year. Um, so the obstacle here is really for you to commit to that long-term goal and not feel the anxiety, not feel the impatience or the worry, start to make changes, start to um, kind of give up on one thing and start something else, this is the need for you to be committed. We have that goal. You know the wealth that you want, whatever wealth means to you. And we have to be willing to apply all of our energy to it. The will must be one, right? We must be fixed in our will to the point that everything we do is in some way, directly or indirectly, however tenuously, connected to our goal, to our will. Everything that we do is in some way connected to this big goal of ours. That is discipline, that is commitment. Okay? And so there's a little bit of this energy that's just like, well, if it's going to take a year, I'd rather do something different now, you know? So we have to remain fixed in this commitment, in this fire energy. Fixed in our will. And that's, that's your superpower. And that's what you need to uh, evoke right now. Yeah. We've got a nine of swords here too. I, I feel like um, this part of this prediction, this, this kind of one year timeline that we're theoretically looking at, okay? I think you're going to learn who your friends are and who your friends aren't. Okay. The nine of swords here, it might not be a pleasant experience. Okay. And I'm just going to be honest. The nine of swords, not a very good card. Yes. Every card has light and shadow. What's the light here in the nine of swords? Well, I guess the light is knowing the truth. Yeah. Knowing who is with you and who is not with you. This is also, I feel like, um, part of your difficulty is um, committing to this life, committing to this one singular will, this goal, this, and it, it's a complex goal. It's a 10 of pentacles, right? There's a lot of components to it. Okay. But realizing that 
that is my will, that is my goal. And so it really limits all of our other expenditures, right? All of our other, which really are leakages of energy. You know, we start to learn and it comes by way of that intuition, uh, intuition and the, the instinct. You know when you're on your path and when you're not, okay? And it's really kind of a painful thing to just be like, I, I got to I gotta keep stay on my path. I got to keep going in this direction. So it kind of pains us to have to let go of things. You know, wastes of energy, leakages of energy, blockages of energy, vampires of our energy, right? It could be that there are friends, relationships that we have that are, not only are they not conducive to our path, but they are actually drawing energy away from us, pull it, trying to pull us off of our path. So I feel like in the next year, you're going to realize a lot of, uh, I feel like we're kind of, we're clearing out a lot of stuff that that's just a waste of our energy. All right. And yes, this could be friendships. This could be habits or indulgences, desires that we have, um, habits that we have, things that we do with our time. And it's not that hard to connect everything that you're doing to your will, right? So it's not like we just have to be like monks in a cave focusing on uh, a certain job and that's all we get to do. As long as everything, again, directly or indirectly connects with your ultimate kind of, let's say, one-year plan, then everything is permitted, okay? As long as it is helping you get to that goal, even when you got to take a spa day or something, or you're going to go just watch the game and have some beers with your buddy, right? Um, that's not a waste of energy, you know? Uh, you'll know when it's a waste of energy. You'll know, you'll feel it when it's not right, okay? As long as everything connects with that long-term goal, everything is there pushing you forward, even going and just, you know, indulging in some sweet treats or something at the ice cream shop. I don't know. Um, because maybe that is giving you uh, the necessary break and the relief in order to continue on with your work. You know, everybody needs a spa day now and again. Everybody needs a bowl of ice cream now and again, right? Um, that's not exactly what we're talking about. There are other things, and I, t I think it's in the form of people, relationships, that are more a waste of your energy than they are a gain or an assist in your life, okay? And I think that's going to be something difficult that you're going to have to uh, experience in the next, again, 10, 12 months, or maybe sooner. I don't know. But this is the this is the kind of time frame that we're looking at, right? And again, it's kind of arbitrary. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your wealth is. I don't know what your Ten of Pentacles is. So we're saying a year. That's where, you're, where you will be a year from now is right there. Uh, somewhere along the way, you're going to have to get rid of some of these things. Because these are, just, I mean, it really is just like a thorn in your side. Yeah. Let's look at the mystery card. Let's see what tiny Bob Ross has for us. Uh, predictions, predictions, predictions. Maybe more water energy. I feel like we need something more developed along those lines. We have a, a lot of earth. We have a lot of fire. Um, as far as we, you know, the 10 and the 10, maybe we need a 10 of cups, right? If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. A two of wands. Interesting. Um, the two of wands is, is in every moment we're making that choice to follow our will. Again, the will has to be one, not two, right? We can't be a house divided against itself with what our plan, what our, what our purpose is in life. Um, so in every moment we make the choice to do something, whatever, even if it means going to get an ice cream or watching the game and having some beers with your buddies. Um, I don't drink. I, I would probably have a root beer. I think I like root beer. Um, it's not necessarily that, but every moment we have to choose to behave in such a way 
to act in such a way, to progress in such a way that we are getting closer to our goal and not just idling and certainly not getting further away from it. And you'll know intuitively, the high priestess will tell you, right? You'll know intuitively when you're making the right or wrong. It's kind of a conscience in a way, right? Where you kind of know when you're not doing the right thing. But this is a different version of what is the right thing. It's not a moral, ethical question. What the right thing is, is what is going to help you get to your goals. The wrong thing is what will not help you get to your goals. It's that simple. And that's the two of wands. And that is the proper usage of this fire energy and your superpower right now in your life, in what you're trying to accomplish. All right. We're going to do an extended reading, Leo. If you want to stick around, there's a link up here. There's one down below. Um, new readings for Leo every Tuesday and Saturday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. I am here every day. You can come see me again tomorrow, and we can talk this through a little bit more. All right. If you ha haven't subscribed yet, I wish you would. It's totally free. It doesn't cost anything. It helps out the channel. I appreciate that. Um, YouTube's being a little bit weird with the channel here. Uh, these readings aren't getting pushed out to as many new people as they used to be. I don't know if something changed with the algorithm. Um, so right now I feel like I feel like this channel needs all the help it can get. So I appreciate you liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing, sharing it, um, whatever you know, whatever you feel compelled to do, um, I, I think is very very helpful, and I really do appreciate it. I want you to know, Leo, that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.